you know what I found is uh, anybody that's known me for any amount of time at all, they know that I'm a groundbreaker. My ministry, Brother David, you've known, God sent me into places that sometimes the devil didn't even want to go. <laughs> Tough places. And yet, being obedient to the Lord is one of the most awesome things you can do in life. Really, nothing is more fulfilling than being in the will of God. If you ever get out of the will of God, you'll find out exactly what I'm talking about. But to be in the will of God is so awesome. And You know, I, I, when I was young, I was a groundbreaker. Uh, I remember when I went to southeastern Kentucky and we started singing with a projector, an overhead projector. And, and one, one of the, the, the fellas that pastored in town that was a Pentecostal, I'll not tell what group he's with because some of you are here tonight. But he was, he's a great man of God, but he just didn't understand what I was doing. And I heard him tell one of his church members, said, I, the church member said, I was over Brother Ely's church. Man, did they have a move of the Holy Ghost. And I heard that pastor say, yeah, but you know, they sing off the wall. <laughs> you know, if we can get over what kind of worship it is, because it doesn't matter, it's not for us. It's for God, amen? Doesn't matter what style, it doesn't even matter if it's in tune. We need to be spontaneous to the presence of the Lord and allow the Spirit of God to move in our services like we used to. And I believe that God is getting ready to do greater things in these last days than anything we've experienced previously. Because God said in the last days, who said it? God said it. In the last days, I will pour out of my Spirit upon all flesh. Folks, we've not seen the great revival yet. We're, we're, we've not seen it, but we're on the verge of it because there's some people getting hungry again. There was a little while there when i go someplace and preach, people would say, he's old school. It was the same people that used to call me new school. You see, what it is is they change. And they don't even realize themselves that they're changing. And sometimes they pass you up. And then they change their ideas about you. See, it doesn't matter what your ideas are about me, but it does matter what you think about God. And if your mind is right with God, I'm telling you, if you just have your mind enveloped with the mind of Christ, you'll think things like victory. You'll think things like growth. You'll think things like blessing. You'll think things like the devil is not going to come in and take this service over because God is in the house. Amen? How many feel his presence? Is there a Pentecostal in this room? Hallelujah. Woo! It's funny. When I first started pastoring, I had to pull them down off the chandeliers. And everybody said, you know, he's doing all that new stuff and he's slowing things down. I had to. They were running so fast they didn't know where they were going. But then after so many years went by, now they tell that I'm the guy that gets them running. Listen, I'll just be happy if some of you move. <laughs> I told, told the church I attend in Knoxville, Tennessee, there's 2,200 members. I got up to preach one Sunday morning. I said, I'll make you a deal. I said, if you won't get... It, uh, upset for me being excited about the Lord, I won't get upset with you for being dead. Man, God's people ought to be the happiest people on earth. We ought to be a rejoicing people, amen? I tell you what, we need to notify our face. <laughs> Praise God, some of y'all scare me. I want to say on behalf of Barnabas Ministries International that we want to honor this pastor, Pastor Ron Russell, and his church for all their endeavoring that we could come together and have this local district meeting. And uh, I just thank God for every one of you fellas that are in the fellowship that are here. And I know some more on the way tomorrow, several more. And uh, I just want to also thank all the other preachers, evangelists, pastors, whatever your ministry is. Thankful for every single one of you being here. We're all on the same level. Whether you belong to Barnabas Ministries or not, it doesn't matter. It's belonging to the kingdom of God. God's got a lot of good people doing a lot of good things. And I just praise God for all of them. We're going to have our annual meeting May 5, 6, and 7. So make sure you write that down. It never ceases to amaze me. There's always one or two in the fellowship that we'll send them a letter. Then we'll send them a card. Then we send an email. And then they'll call me up and say, what were those dates on that meeting? And then they wonder why their church is not growing. 
It's because they're not paying attention. I tell you, if you want to grow in your church, pay attention, not just to what's happening in the church, but especially what's happening when God speaks. This morning I had the privilege to preach. I preached a message about Gideon and how they drank at the river and some knew how to drink right and some didn't. And there's some people that go to church that have gone all their life and they don't know how to drink from the river. And if you don't drink properly, you'll not receive properly and you'll not be ready to face the devil. Praise is one weapon that God has given us, but it's not the only weapon. God's given us his word. And the devil hates that. The devil can quote it more than some preachers can. But the devil hates it when he quotes it out of context and you get anointed and start quoting it in context. The devil hates that. I just want to say again that we're just appreciative for the presence of God and all of you that are here. So don't forget, May 5, 6, and 7, the annual meeting for Barnabas is going to be in Berea, Kentucky, a church on the rock. We're expecting about seven or 800 people a night there. Uh, Brother Kent Christmas is going to be our night speaker. We've got some great things lined up in the day services that we'll be announcing later. But we're going to have a great move of God, May 5, 6, and 7. You need to put it on your calendar and make sure that you're part of that and you're there. If you are here and you have a desire or if you're interested in coming into Barnabas Fellowship, we'd love to have you. See me between services. I have some applications. We'd love to have you come be part of us. I want to say tonight how glad I am that my wife was here because I couldn't remember the second verse. <laughs> hey, how, many, how many could see her? Could you see her response? When I was walking to her, she knew what I was up to. I've never done that to her before like that. But as I was walking toward her, she knew. And she was going, too high for me. I said, try it. How many think it was just right for her? Yeah. Amen. Love you, baby. You did a good job. You're anointed. That's all, that's all it takes is being anointed. It doesn't really matter how you sound as much as how anointed you are. I love you, and I'm so glad you're here with me these few nights here in this meeting. Well, if you have your Bibles, let's get ready. I want you, if you will, turn to the book of Job. It'll be all right. It's okay. <laughs> Don't get scared. The book of Job. I'm ready to preach. But there's one more thing I have to do before I preach. I want to introduce you to our speaker tomorrow night and Tuesday night. Brother Aaron Turner, would you stand? You and your lovely wife back there just stand together. Amen. We are glad you're here. <laughs> Praise God. Did Brother McClure do all right for you? <laughs> Praise God. Well, you've heard me say this a dozen times if you've been around me at all. I'm not the best preacher in the world, but... Ain't none of them enjoy it any more than I do. I love it when the anointing gets on me. And if I don't get a good anointing tonight, I'll go back to the motel room and moan and groan. You know, and I won't blame it on you. I'll blame it on me. But I can tell you right now, I'm starting to feel that freshness. Praise God. You're in for a treat the next two nights. I've heard that brother preach. He's awesome. Not long ago, I heard a fellow tell a story about a young man that he knew down in Atlanta, Georgia, that uh, his parents were very poor, but they worked so hard to gather enough money to send him down to the university there in Atlanta. And the young man wasn't like a lot of young people today. He didn't take advantage of that, get away from home and just party, but he really applied himself and he studied and he came out the top of his class. And, and then he went on and got his master's. And then he went on and got his PhD. But he never forgot how he got there. He always honored his parents for the sacrifice that they made for him. Once he got his PhD, a, a huge industry hired him to come down to Brazil and to work for them. After he got down there, he meditated a lot about home. How many know when you're away from home, you think about home a lot? He started thinking about mom and dad, and he thought, I need to do something special for them. They've been special to me. I just want to do something special for them. He's making big bucks now, see. So 
he asked his friend, what could I do? And he said, let me tell you about this one story. He said, they sell unique things. He said, go down to such and such street and turn left, and it'll be over there on your right side. And so he went down and he went in that store, and he told the storekeeper why he was there. He wanted to do something special for his parents. And so the storekeeper said, well, just come right over here. I want to show you something that's special. And, and so he showed him this bird. And he said, well, what's so special about that bird? And the storekeeper said, well, it speaks. And he said, well, lots of birds speak. He said, yeah, but this bird speaks in Portuguese and English. And so then the young man got excited. He thought that would be an awesome gift. So he said, how much? What's the price for this bird? And the storekeeper said, $5,000. And he took a step back and said, $5,000? He said, well, it does speak two languages. And he said, well, that's, that's true. It does speak two languages. He said, what would it cost me to ship it home? And he said, that'd be $3,000 plus $2,000 more to make sure that everything's right with it to get through customs. And he said, you're telling me that this bird's going to cost me $10,000. And, and, and the, the storekeeper said, yes, but just think it's a special gift. Do you know of any other bird that can speak Portuguese and English? He said, well, no. So he went ahead and purchased the, the bird, and he sent it to his mom and dad. A few days later, he figured about the time that they surely had received it. He called his dad, and he said, Dad, he said, did you receive the gift that I sent you, the bird? And his dad said, oh, yes, son, it was delicious. He said, Dad, I spent $10,000 on that bird. It speaks two languages, Portuguese and English. And his dad said on the phone, well, he should have spoken up. <laughs> Can I just say to you preachers especially, it's time to speak up. It's time to say something. It's time to open up your mouth with the anointing of the Spirit and say something. The world is listening for you to speak truth with the power in that truth. Preachers, let's agree tonight, we that are here, that we're getting ready greater than ever to say something. I tell you here in America, they need to hear the right thing. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I love the word of God. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. You can't love God without loving the word. He is the living word. Amen. Praise his holy name. That word was made flesh and came and dwelt among us. He's still dwelling here tonight. Not only among us, but within us. And my favorite scripture says, Christ within you is the hope of glory. Praise God. But it's time to what? Say something. Look at somebody next to you and say, we got to start speaking up. <laughs> Let me take you to Job chapter 22. Job 22 verse 28. While you're turning to Job 22 and 28, let me just say, these words I'm getting ready to read to you are words that were spoken to Job at the time that Job was questioning God. Anybody ever questioned God besides Job? I have. Think about it is, if you're not careful, He'll answer you. And He doesn't always answer you the way that you want to hear it. But what he says you can bank on. I love this scripture. Job 22, 28. Here's what they said to Job when he was questioning God. When he was depressed and down and out and couldn't understand why he was going through what he was going through. And here was the words that were planted in his heart. Thou shalt also decree a thing. And it shall be established unto thee. And the light shall shine upon thy ways. I want to read that again. 
Thou shalt also decree a thing, and it shall be established unto thee, and the light shall shine upon thy ways. When I read that the other day, my spirit got stirred up. Because I realized it's time for me to decree some things. First in that verse, he said, you're going to de decree. Everybody say decree. He said, you decree and God's going to establish. Everybody say God establishes. And then the light will come. Say revelation. I believe that when we start decreeing what we believe that God wants us to decree. That God will come on the scene. It may not be immediately, but it will be right on time. And God will establish what is needed. Decree. Everybody say we do. Then God establishes. And then when God establishes, the light or the revelation comes. Now the Amplified Version says it this way. He said, you shall also decide and decree a thing, and it will be established for you. And the light of God's favor will shine upon your ways. Now, what we're believing God for has to start with us. Three people heard that. I'm going to wait till the rest of you catch up. What we're believing God for, what we want God to establish in our lives, begins with us. God wants to establish some things, but you're not decreeing it. Now I know, let me just take about a minute here and elaborate upon the mess that we saw come to the church in America 30, 35 years ago in the name it, claim it stuff. And I, I know all about that. I know how you can get out, you know, and extend yourself too much in a doctrine and actually lose your mind if you're not careful. A lot of great leaders have done that. The Bible teaches us that a false balance is an abomination unto God. So what, what God wants us to know is that everything in this life has to be balanced. I like to shout, but I don't like to go to churches that that's all they do. When I started pastoring in Middlesboro, Kentucky, my first message was, don't shout until you know what you're shouting about. Because you, you could get up and go, whoa! And if you did, everybody would be jumping and running and stomping on each other. And they were good people and I knew it. And I'm not belittling them by no means. I love them still. But somebody had to say something. It's easy to be a preacher when you come in and you conform to everything because you, you don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. I'd rather hurt somebody's feelings and see them in heaven than, than step back and, and, and not say a word, not say anything, and then split hell wide open. I'd rather hurt somebody's feeling and see order and decency come into the house of God than to let just anything come and go. I'm not preaching mean, I'm preaching anointed. <laughs> Hallelujah. You have to decree. Then God will establish. And then the light or the revelation comes. It wasn't easy when I started decreeing the balanced word. Some people didn't like it. Some people had prayer meetings that I'd die. I'm not joking. Seven people were meeting and praying that that young preacher would die and they specifically asked God to give me a heart attack. All seven of them are dead right now. I'll give you one guess how they all died. Whatever you sow. I just kept decreeing. God's going to raise up a people here. They're going to be a people that shout. But they're going to be a people that know what they're shouting about. They're going to be a people that when somebody asks them, what must I do to be saved? They're not going to say, well, go down yonder and turn left and go to that church and whenever they get to shout and go to the altar. No, they're going to say, the Bible says. 
And they're going to say it with anointing. And they're going to see the, the transformation come in the lives of people. Do you hear what I'm saying? Ain't nobody around any more Pentecost than I am. I just want to know what Pentecost is about. Amen. I, I, I want to see another wave of the Spirit of God come. And I decree that it's coming. Did you hear what I said? I decree that it's coming. And I don't decree that it's coming next year or the year after. I decree that God is moving now for those that will allow Him to establish them that will receive the revelation light of His Word and His Spirit. And so what you're believing for has to start with you. Now, why live with some of the things you've lived with when all you've got to do is say something? You know, we, we hear so much of this positive thinking and so on and so forth that the real people of God that seek a balance have gotten out of balance because we don't even want to hear that truth anymore. But when Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death to life, then guess what? I'm not dead. I'm alive. I am to believe what he says. He said, Verily, verily, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things that he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And we, 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 got the, we got this group that we call the faith bunch. At least they got some faith. They may have gone to an extreme, but at least they're trying to exercise faith. And then the rest of us got upset because they got out of balance, and we don't move in faith at all. We've got, so we're afraid to say something because what if it doesn't become established? Well, I just want to say that the greatest ministry that I've ever been involved in is yet to come. I want to decree that the best days of my preaching are yet to come. Some of you have heard me say this before. I'll say it again. If doctors can declare themselves practicing physicians, I can declare myself a practicing preacher. Amen. I'm just practicing. You wait till I get real good. Because one of these days I'm going to flat preach so good, they're going to say, I can't believe that was Meso Ely. He was anointed by the Spirit so great. And the revelation came after God established something better in his ministry. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, let me just kind of lead you to some things real quick. I don't have time to elaborate upon all of them in depth. But I will lead you to a few things. The book of Obadiah. God rebukes the people that said nothing and did nothing when Nebuchadnezzar's army came against God's people. God's looking for a people that won't let the enemy come in and overcome them. But that will say something. Do you hear what I'm saying? In Genesis 24, Abraham recognizes the need of his son Isaac. And in Genesis 24... He speaks to his servant. He sends his servant forth to get Isaac, his son, a bride. Come on, preachers. You've read it before. And I love this because here's what's said. Abraham's servant, he gets to the land where the bride lives, and, and this is what it says. He decrees something. Everybody say, the servant decreed. He said, let it come to pass. Now, who's saying this? The servant's saying it. Not God. The servant said, let it come to pass that the damsel to whom I shall say, let down thy pitcher, I pray thee, that I may drink and I will give thy camels drink also. Let the same be she that thou hast appointed thy servant Isaac. And there, he says, shall I know that thou hast shown kindness unto my master. He decreed something. God, there's nowhere in there that says God told him to do that. Listen, Abraham knew a spiritual servant when he saw one. He didn't send just any servant. He sent this servant for the bride of his son. And this servant, the first thing he does when he arrives there, his camels are thirsty. He's down by the water. And he decrees before he drinks. Some of us need to start decreeing before we try to feed our flesh. He decreed what would happen. 
This is not a fleece. There's a difference. He decreed something. And you know the story. I like preaching when preachers are in the house because you don't have to get into all the details. They already know the story. The Bible said while he was yet decreeing or while he was yet speaking, the Bible says, here comes Rebecca. <laughs> Hallelujah. I decree a move of the Holy Ghost in this house tonight. Tonight, I don't care how hungry you are for the meal after service. I don't care how tired you are for driving all day. Sister Ely and I drove all day yesterday. I preached real hard this morning and I didn't get a lot of rest this afternoon. People were calling, but I want to tell you something. I decree tonight in this service a move of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Now Satan said, you better be careful what you say. What if it doesn't happen? If it doesn't happen to you, it's because you didn't receive what was decreed in the Spirit. That's not a cop-out. That's a fact. Because what I degree, when the Spirit's moving on me, God will establish. And what He establishes, He turns the light on for. And the revelation comes. Somebody say to God be the glory. And so that young woman comes down. While he was yet speaking, he asked Rebecca, Whose daughter art thou? When I read that, I thought about a young man when I was in Virginia. You know, back then, in the former generation. When people saw a young man or a young woman, the first thing they said to them, if they didn't know who they were, they didn't say, what's your name? They said, who's your daddy? Who's your daddy? I remember telling a lot of people at the country store, my daddy's Ralph Ely. Oh, Ralph. We've known Ralph since we were kids. We used to throw rocks at each other. And they equate you with your father. <laughs> Well, I've been in the kingdom quite a while. I've been preaching since 1972. You know what? I want to be equated with my father. <laughs> People say, who's your daddy? Abba. <laughs> Abba. Oh, yeah. Abba God's my father. He's the father of all. There would be nothing without him. When he decrees, it is established. <laughs> and the light comes on. He decreed, let there be light. And guess what happened? He established it and there was light. I'm preaching good. Y'all just ain't amen to me any good. <laughs> now, I, I, I did a little study on camels. And I found out that camels, they drink 20 gallons of water when they're thirsty. 20 gallons of water. Now here's this little girl coming down. She got a water pot. Here's a man of God, a servant of God, who's decreeing that she's going to come. And she comes while he's decreeing. And she not only comes and gives him drink, but she gave his camels drink. The Bible said he had 20 camels with him. That totaled 200 gallons of water. This little gal's going to be tired if she's going to marry Isaac. But she not only gives him to drink, she waters all of his camels. Now think about this. Each camel drinks 20 gallons. Total of 200 gallons. That's one thing. But they didn't have paper cups that they carried back then. They had clay pots. The weight of the pot plus the weight of the water. But this girl had been decreed. <laughs> Woo! The, the, the man of God decreed her coming and she showed up while he's still talking. And she showed up and proved she wasn't just any woman. This little gal knows exactly what to do. And that is to satisfy thirst. God is looking for a bride, the church, that will satisfy the thirst of a thirsty people in a thirsty land. How can we satisfy the thirst? We can only do it when we say something. We've got to open our mouth.
Charles and quit talking about how it used to be or maybe it might be again someday. We've got to say something in the now. God is moving now. His spirit is flowing now. His anointing is here now. Woo. Hallelujah. Oh, I like this. Y'all sit still because I'm just getting started. Verse 58. The man says, Wilt thou go with me? I like what she says. She doesn't say, Well, I don't know. That's the church in America. What do I get out of it? She doesn't do that. She said, I will go. Nothing happens in the kingdom of God until we say something. We have to articulate it. Know that it's balanced with the word of God and not out of balance. Know that it's in the purpose and the will of God. And not be ashamed and not be afraid to decree it. Now, can, can I just decree a name in this house? Is that all right? Can I, can I pastor? I want to decree a name. Jesus. Jesus. I want you to think about that name. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is more than just a word. Come on. <laughs> Jesus is also a prayer. I-75. Been up with my brother-in-law, my sister, and my wife. Driving our car coming south on I-75 in Michigan. We'd been to Amish country. We're on our way home. You Hoosiers can relate to this. Because your weather is similar. The temperature dropped. The rain turned to sleet. Then the road turned to ice. An 18-wheeler, flatbed loaded, was in my right lane. I'm driving as careful as I can, but all of a sudden I hit a spot of ice. My car turned sideways, and when it did grab or had traction, it shot right toward underneath the trailer of that 18-wheeler. And I watched my right fender, and it was completely out of my control. The big wheel rolling coming right toward my right fender as we were going underneath that truck. But my wife said something. <laughs> she said, One, two, all right, it's working. It felt like an angel grabbed the back bumper of that car. I kid you not. And it felt, it was like a jerk. Jerk that car and turn that back around. And I was just going right down the road beside that truck again. You got to say something. Sometimes you don't have time for a long period. Lord, if we would have appreciated it if, if you would have helpeth us. Sometimes you don't have time for that stuff. Sometimes just that name, the creed, in prayer works miracles <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> I said hallelujah to God hallelujah it's a prayer Jesus is also a praise when you decree his name hallelujah you're in the house the anointing moves up oh Jesus <laughs> you're praising because you recognize he is here it's a decree in itself well, I won't preach too much longer, I promise you. Kind of like Elizabeth Taylor said to her seventh husband, I won't keep you long. <laughs> that was Elizabeth Taylor, I didn't say that. All seriousness aside, some of them got it. <laughs> Listen to this. I want, I want to give you something that stirred in my spirit a couple of days ago. Your comprehension is not a prerequisite to your cooperation. 
I'm going to say it again. Your comprehension is not a prerequisite to your cooperation. Now, what are you talking about, Brother Ely? I'm talking about when I was a kid, I learned this revelation. Back then, my dad hardly ever spanked me. He didn't have to. He just had to look. And when I was just starting to get out of line, he'd look at me. And I mean, whew, you were praying already. God, don't, don't let him get too upset. Because been there, done that, didn't like it. He'd just look at me. And when he'd say, get over there and do so and so. You know, you didn't lay around like kids do today. And say, yeah, well, when I'm ready, I, I don't feel like it. No, not with my dad. I made the great mistake one time when he told me to do something. He said, turn that radio off. Oh, what a fool I was. I said, turn it off yourself. Boom. I woke up later. My head hurt. He could have been put in prison today. But he knocked some sense into me and I'm preaching the gospel. Well, hallelujah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. What I said, your comprehension is not a prerequisite to your cooperation. If you comprehend truth, respond to truth. Do you hear me? And don't waste time responding to truth. If God tells you to do something, do it. I made a great mistake years ago by sharing my vision with somebody when God didn't tell me to. Another preacher said, what is your next move? I said, we're going to move over here, blah, blah, blah. And I said, where? Where? We're going to build a big church down there. That land's for sale. We're going to go buy it. The next week, that preacher went down and bought that property. When God told me to move, I should have moved. Sometimes we have to learn some lessons hard before we learn to, to move when there is a word given to us. Amen? Now, real quickly, I'm going to rush through this. Passages where decrees were made in the Scripture. How many remember that Abraham was a friend to God? Don't you love it when you've got a, a big friend, big shot friend? Come on, let's get real. We do. You know, when we're with them, we say, yeah, well, this is my friend. You know, this is my friend. My brother, only a few years ago, lost the state champion uh, record in the state of Indiana in high school wrestling. Forty-some years went by before his record was beat. I used to decree and didn't even know it when I was in junior high. He was in high school. Everybody in Noblesville, Indiana knew Lucky Ely. And it was only a few years ago that record was broken. But back then, I decreed some things. When boys would come up and pick on me, I'd say, you know who my brother is? My brother's Lucky Ely. And when I'd say that, man, they said, oh, man, we're sorry. We're sorry. You better be because I'm going to get him. When, when I get him, you've had it. You're here when I come back. <laughs> oh, I was tough, man. Because of my friend, my brother. How many's got a friend like that? Abraham had a friend like that. One he could depend upon. One that had all the power that would ever be needed for any situation or circumstance coming his way. Somebody say a friend to God. We sing I am a friend to God. Thousands and thousands of people sing that in America. And the truth is most of them are lying. They don't know God enough to even have a relationship with him. Much less be a friend to God. If you're a friend to God, you're going to do things when you don't comprehend it get up leave everything Abraham go to a land you know not of <laughs> he got up he left he did not comprehend it but the word of the Lord was given to him somebody say that's a friend of God now I like when he was 79 years old this shrimp of a man speaking to God on a friendship level begins to say some stuff. God says to him, Abraham, I'm going to destroy this city over here. Abraham begins to talk to God. And he, he, he said, God, that be far from thee. Now can you imagine talking to God like that? God says, I'm going to kill every one of them. Yeah, you don't want to do that, God. Come on, that's far from you. You're not like that. God says, well, I'll tell you what. I can find 50 righteous. You know the story. Then he turns around again as a friend of God. Friends can really kind of reach out to you. 
<laughs> and, and he said, that be far from thee, God. And they get down to the number. You know the story, preachers. That was him decreeing something to God himself. Read it in context. 79-year-old shrimp opened his mouth to God and said something. <laughs> if you're God's friend, you can decree in the light of your friendship with God. In Joshua chapter 10, it says this. Everybody, I hear preachers and teachers in church, they get up and say, Joshua stopped the sun. No, he didn't. Joshua didn't have the power in himself or by himself to stop the sun. The Bible says in Joshua 10 and 12, Then Joshua spoke to the Lord. In the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the sons of Israel, and he said, In the sight of Israel, and he asked, well, he decreed to God to stop the sun. And when he decreed it, God established it. And when God established it, Revelation came to those people of Israel. They saw, oh, there's something in this talking to God now. I mean, uh, he talked to God and he decreed that the sun stop and God established the stopping of the sun. A revelation of light came. Come on, I'm still preaching good. I ain't finished yet. Stay with me. Keep your ear open to the Lord. Because when you get this in your spirit, it's going to change you. The last few days, I'm trying to change myself. I, you know, I, I'm not getting on all of this, you know, name it, claim it stuff. But I'm going to get back what the devil stole from me. And that's faith and decreeing the word of the Lord and, and, and vision. And start talking more positive. Instead of getting up and saying, I just don't feel good today. How many, how many have said time and time again, I've got a bad temper? That's why you have it. You decree that you have a bad temper. Stop decreeing that you have a bad temper. When I was young and just got saved, I was telling everybody, you know, I got a bad temper. And I'd let them know what I'd do to them too if I ever lost it. You see, we get so proud of our bad temper. We brag on it. We decree it everywhere. One day the Lord spoke to me and said, you know why you got that temper? Because you say it. So when people would start talking to me about temper, I'd say, I used to have a bad temper. Well, I tell you what, God can heal that. He's healing me. I used to have a real bad temper. He's healing me. One guy said to me one day, I told him that. He saw me get a little upset. He said, I thought you lost your temper. I said, no, I said, God's healing me. And I'm better now than I've ever been before in that area. And I know I'll get attacked as soon as I get out of church tonight if I'm not careful. But I'm decreeing that the devil's not going to get me down with it. Because the Lord is with me. 2 Kings 4.13 To the woman who made the prophet's quarters for Elisha. He said this to her because she was childish. Who said it? The man Elisha said it. Not God. Elisha said it. According to the time of life, thou shalt embrace a son. And the Bible said, and the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her. What season did she have the son? The season that Elisha said unto her. Preachers, let's start preaching, decreeing what God wants. Let's not be afraid of people thinking that we're in that out of balance game. Let's get back positive. I don't care if you're Assembly of God, Mountain Assembly, Church of God, Church of God of Prophecy, Old Time Holiness. I don't care what that the name over your door is. I will fellowship with you in the anointing of the Holy Ghost and I decree we can have church together if we'll come together and believe the Word of God. Hallelujah. It's not who's growing, outgrowing the other. It's not who's doing bigger things or smaller things. It's not who's got the best singers or the poorest singers. It's about a people who are a friend to God that know how to say something. Hallelujah. Are you tired of hearing preaching where they say nothing? I want to hear preaching that changes my life. I want to hear preaching that transforms me into the likeness of Christ. That not only will I not have to worry about a bad temper, but I'll be more positive around other people.
like to be around negative people. I want to be around some positive folks that are saying something for God. Woo. <laughs> Look somebody next to you and say, he ain't finished. I ran off and left Joshua. I'm going to go back to him. How many preachers ever run off and leave your message? Now, I want you to think about the sun. Stand thou still upon Gibeon. And the sun stood still. Joshua spoke to the Lord. Now think about this. The sun is 93 million miles from us. It's been said that the degrees of Fahrenheit of the sun is 29,000 degrees Fahrenheit. The man that measured that is no longer with us. <laughs> There's a truth. He's dead. <laughs> I like... I like what he did. 93 million miles away and he decrees something. Think about that, David. That, I mean, we've read that, preached it, taught it. But when you stop and think about it, Joshua was no better than us. I believe in the same God. I believe in the same Word of God. I have the same Spirit of God. I'm going to decree some things, Joe. Preachers, we're here to hear from God tonight. And I believe that God has given me this word to challenge all of us to not be afraid because some preachers have gotten out of balance. Don't be afraid to preach the truth. I decree God establishes light comes. Jesus is the light. Jesus is the word. Jesus is the revelation. I decree, say it. God establishes. Light comes. And this is the best part for you. You know why? Because I'm quitting. But before I do, in 2 Kings chapter 8, there's another story that's told that I could preach on all night. As a matter of fact, I came across this a couple of days ago, and I got so stirred up, I thought, I don't even know if I should mention that this would make a great message. The same woman that made room for the prophet, the same woman that the prophet decreed to her that she would have a child, the same woman that when that child died, the prophet came and that child was risen from the dead is the same woman that later in 2 Kings chapter 8 that Elisha decreed something to her again. He said, can I paraphrase this? Is it all right? Pack up all your furniture, load up the U-Haul and get out of town because God told me a famine's coming. And you know what? I guess after... A man of God doing all that he'd done in her life. She didn't question it at all. She just packed up and moved. And she went to the land of the Philistines. And, and seven years of famine came upon the Israelites. Seven years. The prophet told her, don't come back for seven years. And seven years later, the famine had gone. And she jumps on the camel and goes home. And when she gets home... Goes back to her house. Now this is what we'll preach, preachers. I've not even put it together yet. Let God put it together for you. She went back to her house. Everybody say her house. Expecting to go into her house. And when she goes to the door, the house is filled with people that do not belong there. Has God ever told you to go over here and do one thing and while you're doing it, the enemy comes in and tries to steal what you already possessed? And you're just over there being obedient to a decree from God. But she came back and folks were in the house. Now I like what she did and this is the closing. This is the real one. She went to the king. <laughs> when Satan steals something from you, go to the king. And when she went to the king, she told him. Now the, the cool part, somebody say God's cool. The cool part was this. Before she even got through the door, the servant of the king was standing there telling the king, there is a woman that the prophet Elisha did this for, this for. Read it for yourself. And right while the servant is telling the king about her, she steps in. How many know that got the king's attention? And she makes her plea to the king. 
And when she made her plea to the king, and he t- that she told him that they've taken my valuables, they've taken my home, everything I own, they now possess it, and they won't give it back to me. I tell you, when you take things to the king, <laughs> I love what was said. The king made a decree. <laughs> His decree was to the servant, and I'm, gonna, I'm just paraphrasing this, take enough guys down there to go ahead and kick them out. Go down there and kick them out. And he looked at the woman and he said, everything that was taken from you, I decree, will be given back to you. What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying it's time for us to decree. The church needs some pastors and preachers to get in the pulpit and start decreeing some things. Some of you have lost your vision because you worked so hard toward it and it didn't come to pass. You're just about gone with it. You're just about giving up on it. What God is waiting on to establish that vision for you is for you to say something. Decree it. I remember when I did, Pastor, it was on the mornings that the church was half empty that I'd get up and say, I see in the Spirit people coming into this place. Y'all better find out where you want your seat and hold on to it because there's an influx of people getting ready to come into this house. And before church was over, they were shouting about God getting ready to fill the house up. And guess what? He did. And He will. When you decree a good thing and God hears it. Now I'll say this real quick. There is a difference between prophecy and decree. When you decree something, that's you speaking and God listening. But prophecy is God speaking and you listening. If if, if I say something that's prophecy, it's going to go like this. Thus saith the Holy Ghost. Thus saith the Lord. I'm going to say God saying it, not me. And I'd rather do that. That way you got to deal with God with what's said, not me. But if I'm decreeing it, I'll say things like, I just want to establish something tonight in the kingdom. And the way I establish that is I'm going to decree something to you. And and when I decree it, my establishment only becomes because he establishes it. And what happens is when God starts establishing what you've decreed, the light comes on in the church. People start believing. People start receiving. And God blesses his people in abundance. Stand with me if you will. I'm tired of people out of balance being honored and blessed more than me. I'm not jealous. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of people that are out of balance in the word that honestly don't have to ask for anything. And we're working. And I mean working so hard sometimes. I mean, you just feel like throwing your hands up. Let's get real. Just feel like, is anybody saved anymore? You know, at first you'll say, I guess I'm the only one. And then by the end of the day, you question yourself. (laughs) I want to start decreeing things and seeing them happen before I leave this place by way of the grave. I want to decree to you that the best preaching you've ever done is on its way right now. I believe it's time for you to start getting revelation. If you will decree it, God will establish it. He'll give you revelation that will boggle your mind. You don't have to pay $250 to go to a seminar to get what God gave somebody else. What you need to do is decree what God's going to do for you. I want every preacher in the house to come up here and stand real quick. Come on, every preacher. Praise God. Want to bring your wife with you? That'd be great. Come on, preachers. Sister really, I want you to come on up here if you will too, honey. If I preach too long, blame it on Brother Ron. There wasn't a clock on the pulpit and there wasn't one on the wall. So I just took it for granted he wanted me to go in. Somebody say, how can that man move in the spirit and have a good time at the same time? It's easy. I'm not hung up in religious junk. I'm hung up in Jesus. Jesus would stop for just a minute and play with the kids. 
Jesus knew how to dance and have fun. Religiosity is a chain that will bind you down even in the ministry. I want to say something. I want to say it to all of us in the ministry. I want to decree it to all of us, including myself, that we're getting ready to see harvest like we've never seen harvest before. We're getting ready. We're going to open our eyes. We're going to see that it's ripe and it's ready. That's it. Let the Holy Ghost begin to move through you. I decree it. God will establish it. If you'll receive it, the light will come on. Need all your chakra to patita lenta kaya to so. Here, Brother Peters. Come here. Naraya sotora barada dara. Yedere shidoro no moro to sandala mano. Come here, Jimmy. Brother, Jerry, Jimmy, come on. That's it, come on. Get around my brother. A religious spirit would decree you dead and gone. But that spirit is not in the house tonight. The spirit of love, the spirit of healing, the spirit of deliverance is in the house tonight. And the spirit of God is moving. And the spirit of God is removing some things. Hindrances. Don't look back, saith the Lord God. Don't look back, saith the Lord God. Don't look back, saith the Lord God. For I, the Lord God, have called you to move forward. Decree, and I will establish, saith the Lord. And the light will come on of revelation like you've never known before. Hallelujah. God said that. I'm going to decree this. I decree fellowship greater than you've ever known it in the kingdom of God. I decree that your ministry is going to have doors open to you. I decree that you and your wife, where is she at? She's still in here. Come up here real quick. Hurry while the Spirit of God's moved. You got to get your shoes on. That's all right. Whatever. Just come on up. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Brother Peter says, your wife is coming. I decree unto her that there's healing in the house tonight. I decree unto her not only healing for her body. I decree unto her there's healing for her soul. That there's healing for her spirit. I decree unto her new fellowship. New people in her life who love her. I you were fighting the enemy over here and the enemy possessed your house but I decree your home now, brother. <laughs> and you've called upon the king. And the king decreed <laughs> that everything that was taken from you shall be established, saith the Lord, by the Lord God. See the light. Receive the glow of heaven. In the name of Jesus. Woo! <laughs> It does not matter what others say. It's what God is saying to you. There's healing in the house, church. There's deliverance in the house. <laughs> Glory to God. We got to say something. We gotta say something. We gotta say something. We gotta say something. I decree Jesus is Lord. I 
decree blessing is here oh Hallelujah. I decreed that the Holy Ghost was going to move. And the Holy Ghost is establishing his move right now. Hey, Sharadabosende, Hirodabasata, Rivaboronamede, I said, Deliver. Woo! Glory. Glory. I want every preacher's wife that's standing up here, if you've been fighting something in your body, sickness, illness, whatever, I want you to come over here real quick because there's a heavy anointing right here. You want, want to be touched. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, by His stripes ye were healed. I say... And I decree tonight is your night if you'll receive this decree. And if you'll receive what I'm saying and I think, well, I hope he's right. It sure would be nice to be healed and touched by the Lord. I know he can do it. I hope what Preach really said is right. Preach really is right according to the scripture. I am decreeing according to the scripture. Your healing is here tonight if you'll just receive it tonight. In the name of the healer, Jesus Christ our Lord, be ye healed in Jesus' name. Be ye healed in Jesus' name. Be encouraged tonight. Not only be healed, but I decree that you'll be blessed with that healing. I decree that you're going to start saying, the Lord touch me. God is the healer. <laughs> Woo! Brother Rick, how many weeks has it been since I was at your church? About four, five, about six weeks. When I preached at Brother Rick's church, when I went into that house that night, I would try to lift my arm up and couldn't get it beyond right there. How many's been there before? I mean, my shoulder hurt so bad. I couldn't carry my luggage with it or anything. I mean, I, I'd be so careful. It just wouldn't go up. And God told me to declare healing in the house. And the devil said, how can you declare healing when you can't even lift up your left arm? But I just went ahead because God said do it. And I declared healing. And I kept preaching, didn't I? And by the time I got about halfway through preaching, without even thinking about it, I said, Glory to God! And it's still working. I decree, preachers, tonight, the healing days are not over. We're getting ready, my brother, to see healing in the church like we've never seen it before. We're getting ready to see another move of the Holy Ghost and fire. How about shut up to the table? Woo! It ain't over till God says it's over. You and I are going to preach better than we've ever preached. We're getting ready to be in some of the best meetings we've ever been in. You decree it? I decree it. I decree it. Somebody praise God. Woo! <laughs> Young lady, I'm going to tell you something. And it's going to excite you at first. And after I tell you, I'm going to explain something. There's doors getting ready to open to you that are not in the same move where you've been for a while. Now when that happens, that's exciting. It, I like to break out. David wanted his borders extended. I want my borders extended. The problem is, is when God is establishing you, the light comes to you, but it doesn't to everybody else. There's going to be some folks that, what in the world is she going over there and speaking to those ladies for? Don't pay any attention to it. Because God's saying to you, not me decree, God's saying to you, that He's getting ready to open new doors to you. If people that you have loved and ministered to for years turn you away because you're open to help others, that's their problem. That's not your problem. 
And I promise you that if you're obedient to the Lord, you'll be glad you did. And every preacher said, Amen.